so to today today we're glad to have a session on on becoming an all-round data scientist which will be taken through by uh, our guest today that is Rose Delila. So to welcome you all, this is the SOIC Tech Talks, which whereby we welcome, it's about tech enthusiasts or those interested in tech system. And these are different topics and mostly every Saturday inviting inviting uh, different guests to talk about their expertise to talk topic. so for today we have uh, the will be through is a data scientist and it becoming data scientist so then I call him so that he can give this vision of herself so then that's the decision. Back to you. Okay. Uh, just raise your hand if you can hear me. Awesome. I'll just briefly have my camera on. Hi, hi guys. I don't know if you have interacted before with some of you. I can see familiar names. But yeah, glad to be here today. Glad to do this presentation. Um, maybe just to ask you on the chat, like maybe share if you're a beginner or you're just getting started in data science, just put on the chat. Um, you can put an emoji. I think Meet has emojis. You can just put an emoji of you raising your hand or you can raise your hand so that I see the audience. If you're just extremely getting started in data science, like you haven't interacted with it before. Okay, I can see some hands raised. Okay, so yeah, um, I think it's yeah, roughly nearly half. Um, but that's good so that I know how to guide the presentation. So yeah, awesome. Glad to have you guys here. It's a Saturday. I wonder why you're not somewhere else. <laughs> but I'm just happy that you're here and you're willing to learn. And I think the discipline and the commitment is something that's very valuable in the tech field. And yeah, plus you're also not so <laughs> clearly what are we doing on a Saturday. So I'll just start the presentation. Um, the moments. Okay, great. So I'll be taking you through becoming an all-rounded data scientist. So in this presentation, it's mostly to just get you to feel like what there is to being a data scientist. I know maybe some of us are self-learning and I have been through that experience and I would like to share it with you um, through the whole process of just self-learning, the school and um, the boot camp, the industries. I think I've been to all that and I'd like to share more intel on that and hopefully to help someone and just becoming an all-rounded data scientist so just brace yourself nothing nothing technical i will do anything technical on a saturday so um we'll just get started with a bit of a pun i think it comes to the jd so data science is 80 percent preparing data and 20 percent complaining about preparing data if you have met data scientists 90 percent of the time they're always complaining how 80 percent of the job is just preparing data so yeah really do they say they spend like a lot of time in machine learning other than just preparing data. So yeah, that just that's something. 
Um, a brief about myself. So my name is Rose Delilah and I am a data scientist with a background in data science and analytics. Um, I have worked as a TM at Moringa School um, as a data science technical mentor. So I have trained, so I understand beginners um, and just like what it takes to be in the field and the challenges we go through. So I've been there with various like 100 plus students uh, through my years and I have understood that aspect. Um, so in case you have any questions, there's no stupid questions, so feel free to ask. I'm currently working as an AI community leader as a, alongside doing data science work across Africa with organizations such as Zindi. For those who haven't interacted with Zindi, I'm going to share with you and I feel like it's the most epic opportunity for you to learn data science. So I'm going to share with you during the end of the presentation. I have worked with Alliance for AI um, and deeplearning.ai to just help facilitate Africa um, AI in Africa and just educate more people on the same. I also venture into content creation. <laughs> I think this is a Gen Z thing, but anyway, I'm a blogger, I blog, and yeah, I'll just put my pages at the end of the of the uh, presentation so that you can feel free to engage with my content. Hopefully you learn more. So yeah, I'm going to get started on, for those who are extremely new to data science, just to talk about just the, what it entails and why we are talking about being an all-rounded data scientist. So data science is a multidisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, and algorithms to extract knowledge and insights from structured and unstructured data. So what this means is data science has different fields within it. That is statistics, which I'm going to take you through in the next slide. It has statistics and math, this, um, computer science, um, and that brought together brings about data analysis, machine learning, and then having the domain expertise enables you to be centered at a particular um, place of work. Let me say just you being able to have the domain so that you can work with the data and understand what insights to get from the data you need to have like domain expertise. But um, within the multidisciplinary field, we have mostly mathematics and statistics, computer science, and that brings together the machine learning, data science aspect, and data analysis aspect. Um, yes, and I'm going to emphasize more on this um, under the data scientist profile. So this is how a data scientist looks like. Um, you can see here in our chat that statistics is mostly loud, and most people do not really um, think about it as, as statistics. We talk about machine learning, we talk about data exploration, we talk about data cleaning, but it's really rare for people to say statistics and emphasize statistics. But what I came to notice is being intentional about the analysis you do in data science, it requires you to have data, uh, to have statistical knowledge and actually math. I really used to hide away from this to aspects a lot because uh, my first journey into data science, I followed Andrew NG, that is during my self-learning period. And I started off with learning gradient descent. And that was like a really bad way to start getting into data science because I didn't have any structure and I didn't understand what they used was for math and statistics but until i got into the field and i was like in order to be more intentional about the analysis um, and how i think about producing solutions and going about um, manipulating data statistics is actually very important case study when you want to maybe evaluate a population and you have to use sampling and you have to use the right kind of sampling to avoid bias, you have to use the right test for hypothesis testing if you're trying to compare two scenarios, um, A-B testing, you know, there's just so much and then you're able to give correct analysis just instead of just looking at data, doing EDA, machine learning, and then 
giving insights. So yeah, I'm a huge advocate for st stat statistics right now and math. And then we have computer science, obviously programming because we are currently in the era of using Python, R, Julia, which I'll talk about uh, in the coming slides. And then there's, there's these other softwares like SPSS and MATLAB, I think that people use. Um, some, some industries actually still have them, but people are, are getting into more programming uh, compared to using those softwares because of large data sets. So there's that. There's also communication. Obviously, you need to be able to communicate insights to um, stakeholders or people who you want to get value from your data. There's domain expertise, which I'll talk more about. And then um, some bit now that comes with data science is you need to know uh, machine learning and data visualization. Those are data visualization techniques. So this is a slide that just says, um, if you're fortunate enough to work in a big tech or a company that has enough people to hire for the role that is able to maybe uh, divide machine learning, a data analyst, a data engineer, a data scientist, you're able to like work in the area or domain that you are very good at so we all need teams so sometimes you might find you are good in programming uh doing data visualization you have the domain expertise but you're really not big into the math and statistics and there's someone who has the math and statistics and machine learning bagged so you work together to have a full proof data science uh, pipeline so that's what it means so teams are very important so learn to work in teams uh, but in case you're not, uh, you find yourself in a startup, just get ready to do everything. <laughs> um, so in case you have any question, you can put it on the chat. I'll just go back to it after the presentation. Uh, so we have something called the data science life cycle. So this is just the end to end how a data scientist thinks around a problem and solves it to the level of deployment. And the different the different cycles that you use, but the most the most popular let me say popular uh, is the crisp DM. It's called cross. Uh, yeah, you can Google cross something. Yeah, I've forgotten the whole the whole. It's it's like um it's a short form, so you can abbreviation, so you can check the long meaning of what it means. So um, it means that now the first thing you do when you get data or let's say when you're put in a company as a data scientist, you need to have the domain knowledge. So that's like one of the most important things in understanding like where you want to work or which type of data scientist you wanted to be. For me, I was just like everywhere. <laughs> um, but for people, like if you're more intentional, maybe you come from a background in finance or a background in logistics or something, you have that domain in your bag. So you're more knowledgeable about that domain and the type of data it, you need to, to, in order to perform analysis and get insights of a problem. So that's why domain knowledge is um, important and that's what is called business understanding you need to be able to understand the business you're working in if it's finance you need to know how the credit scoring system works you need to know fraud how fraud happens and whatever so that you're in a position to when you're collecting data from databases you're able to know which features to collect that will give you insights which leads to data collection. So once you have your domain in check and you know maybe you want to work in marketing and you want to maybe collect data points from different social media aspects so that you know how the business is performing and to know your clients and how you're going to market a new product to them, you need to be able to, to have knowledge about marketing so that you know, okay, let me collect these features so that I can be able to analyze this data and give more insights. So after collecting that data with the right features, um, you, you can then go to data preparation. So this is now like cleaning the data because data comes from social media, let's say Twitter. Twitter has a different way people use at hashtags and whatever. And then there's Instagram, people use something else. And then you scrape all that data you need to clean it into a format that will be easily 
digested by the computer. So that is cleaning in natural language processing, removing those tags, removing the punctuation, etc. So that process becomes heavy, most especially if you have like a lot of data and you need to like keep, you know, writing maybe functions to do that. And, you know, there's a whole process to cleaning it and ensuring that it's totally clean and ready. And then from there on, you want to get the first analysis in the aspect of just understanding what your data is communicating high level from the features. You do EDA, so that's explanatory data analysis where statistics also comes in. You do univariate analysis where you're checking uh, maybe a particular variable or two variables, you do bivariate, you do multivariate analysis, you know, so that you're able to understand the data better and know what if, if, if it's a challenge that needs you to implement machine learning or you can just get insights based on how what the data is communicating from the EDA. And then if your problem needs maybe for you to predict something, you then get into modeling, identifying the right algorithm to use based on your data, and then you get into evaluating your model using the metrics that each um, problem has. Let's say if you want to use for classification problem, you identify if it's accuracy, if it's F1 score, if it's whatever, you evaluate your model and then you set it out for deployment. Yeah, so that's the whole crisp DM. That's how you like work a project in data science or an end-to-end. -end. Sometimes in a company you might find you're doing more of something and less of something. Maybe you're not modeling or you're mostly doing data preparation and masking of personal information. So it depends with where you get spotted or put on for work. Um, but then if you're to do like an end-to-end -end project as a data scientist, that's the cycle you go through. And some important things that can make you valuable as a data, all-rounded data scientist is like having the programming skills. Most, some organizations use Excel and even when you go into institutions right now, they still teach Excel and it's valuable because some traditional organizations have not yet adapted into programming that much. So they still use Excel as their source. So it's also good to learn that. There's also SQL, which is important for querying data. And then we have Python and R for data manipulation. And also there's Scala and Julia that's coming up. I haven't done much research on it, but I hear it's really comprehensive. So yeah, I think just learning either languages would be very beneficial like Python, which is like large scale used because you can even integrate it into like web applications and R for statistics would be nice for analysis. So just identifying which language you'd want to go with and also have SQL in your bag. Like I think SQL is, if you talk to like most experts, even for those who are working in a broad company, Silicon Valley, they just tell you SQL, having SQL is really predominant in the industry. Um, data analysis skills. So again, I emphasize on this is the process of cleaning, changing and processing raw data and extracting actionable relevant information. And the skills that you need, again, is just programming skills, being able to query data from a database and just even knowing how to work with different kind of databases. Let me say places where you store data. Um, and then this data visualization where you visualize your data and see what it's communicating and statistical analysis, which I was talking about, maybe A-B testing or hypothesis testing or yeah, just different statistical tests that you can do uh, with your data so that you ensure that it's not biased and um, it's giving you the right outcome. And also there are some tools that you can use for data visualization without coding. And they're also really good um, additions for putting you on top <laughs> um, in um, selection, maybe of a job opportunity. So that's like Power BI and Tableau. Uh, those are the most, I think there's also a Google Analytics one, but yeah, I think for the most used is Tableau and Power BI that you can talk of. And then obviously there's machine learning, just being able to understand machine learning and how to use the right algorithms for your analysis will put you at, uh, at the front of being an all-rounded data scientist. So 
machine learning is actually kind of easy if you know what the algorithms are doing and what like what what's the plot of the algorithm um at first for me i didn't I didn't really start off understanding the math behind an algorithm. So I just learned from libraries, like if I was to use like something like a random forest, I would see like the different parameters it has, how it's different for, from a decision tree and such things. So that I'm able to know, like if I have this classification problem, I can use a random forest classifier and maybe um, use, um, let's say, maybe a, something, a boosting technique to improve my my model performance, something like that. So just understanding what that entails. But I think for now, um, I'm also trying to look into what the, the math is behind it. It's hectic, but just understanding like how these algorithms are working so that you're able to fine tune them. I think that is another good thing to add into your parcel, but again, you can always start from just knowing what the algorithm is about and how to apply it. And then these others can come if you want to, you know, there's different job opportunities within data science. So you do not need to do everything. You do not need to be a machine learning engineer. That's the work of a machine learning engineer. If you want to be a data analyst, just bug Python, SQL, data visualization skills, you're good. Um, but then there's this someone who wants to be a research scientist and they want to now understand how to build algorithms and improve libraries and stuff. So that's where you bring in the hectic math and statistics. So don't don't feel like you need to learn everything. Just understand what, um, where you want to fall into. If you want to be a data scientist, it can be nice to have that. But if you want to fall into the other categories of data science, there's always some... Um, yeah, there's always some some skills that you can kind of omit. Um, this one is just based on the different partners we have been working with from Google, Microsoft, and they mostly talk about having cloud skills. Um, I haven't like dived into it, but they're really, it, I, I think Microsoft Azure has like a, a machine learning platform. I, a drag and drop. Um, I think that's the only one that I have worked on. Um, but yeah, I I had that this skill is really looked for by these big tech companies, and just because they also store data. Yeah, even you, they store data on cloud uh, platforms. So being able to uh, to extract or just work on that data on their platforms is very important. Yeah, I think. It, was it Google? There's a time I did a project, um, I think for from a Google platform and like extracting data fr from there was like a bit of a challenge. So I think they wanted to also have that knowledge because most of them are moving into cloud platforms and for big tech, you know, they have their own resources. So if you're able to bug like at least one of the platforms and show your exemplary skills in working with such a platform for data storage would be a good addition. Um, there's also this new development of project and product management. This is not a must have in data science. I'm just talking for that person who wants to maybe become like an all-rounded data scientist in the aspect that one day you want to upgrade to a data PM, that's a data product manager or a Okay. Um, so if you want to upgrade to kind of such a situation, it's nice to have like this product management skills so that you're able to like deliver um, tasks on time, work with a team, uh, just scope the project well and understand like what to communicate to the stakeholders or to communicate to the team. But it's nice to have it because even when you're going into this big text, they have rankings and you find that they give like higher rankings to people who have some sort of management background or just skills in them. So yeah, um, yeah. so something to look into if you want to also be in that space of, of getting into 
higher management. But other than that, I think you can just look into, again, the data specialization you want to do and then look at the skills within it that you need to have. So you don't need to have like the cloud and product skills at the moment. Um, okay, so there's also um, now getting into the more marketable non-technical skills for data scientists. We all praise the technical things, but then at the end of the day, the stakeholders won't understand what light GBM is or they won't get what you're saying. So you have to be able to communicate insights in a in an interesting way. I know people still use slides and stuff, but just find of your unique way of how your organization interacts. Um, for me, I can tell you like, even when you work in a, maybe a startup that's very friendly, there's just a way you can be able to communicate insights from your analysis with them, just understanding how they take in information. So just learning that through having communication skills is nice, being able to problem solve, obviously, because as a data scientist, you need to have problem solving skills and be intentional in your analysis, being curious, being able to research and know, okay, this is how I can be able to improve this model or improve this improve my insight or is someone unmuted my dad can mute for now yeah so this um yeah just being curious and having a growth mindset yeah there's a lot of challenges obviously that would come with learning data science even if you're you've already done it for three four five years you'll still have the usual I, I don't know, like it's just sometimes still a struggle. You feel like you need to learn things as things come up. Now there's generative AI. Now you need to do this. Now you need to understand this. There's that too much knowledge. And sometimes you just feel like taking a step back and just taking a breather. But just having that growth mindset of you can learn something bit by bit that it's okay to not know something and to ask and to just be continuously having that discipline and motivation to learn. That is a good thing to have in the company because things will never be changing uh, in tech and you need to, up, to be up to date with that. Don't have the fixed mindset. These collaboration skills, you'll be working with teams. You need to be able to know how to integrate your work with others so that you have like the more... Um, a more impactful insights from your analysis because you need to work with marketing team to know what the target audience needs. You need to work with this team, you need to work with product team. So you need to be able to have collaborative skills, leadership skills in case you've been given a project to support your juniors. You need to be able to get them and to ensure that the pipeline is smooth. So those are just some non-technical skills that you can acquire as a data scientist in the long run and hopefully um, it'll put you on the map and then we have the community ecosystem so this hasn't been updated uh, because you see we have Spacia Tech we have like a lot of communities coming up um, in in data science but I wanted to share like women in machine learning right now we have even women in data which is very active we have Nairobi AI we have AI Kenya, Data Science Africa, Deep Learning Indaba. Deep Learning Indaba was actually my really first community, my first ever community uh, for data science. And it helped me th through understanding what data science was about, like literally the math <laughs> of it and just the academia side of it. And they usually have like annual events across the uh, once in a year annual events. Uh, in different part, parts of Africa. So yeah, just watch out for their newsletter, just enough for it. You can learn a lot from the planning in Daba. And then we have Zindi, which I'm going to give you more context about. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about Zindi uh, before we get into the nitty gritties, because I feel like this is also like a good opportunity for you starting as a data scientist to tap into. Um, so Zind is a professional network for data scientists where you can learn, compete, get money, um, get job opportunities. And I can just share my screen with it so that 
uh, for those who haven't interacted with Zindi before, you can be able to maybe have a grasp of what it is um, all about. Okay, just a moment. Yeah, so yeah, the platform looks like this. Uh, this is what we we really brag about in Africa, the Zindi platform. And it's, you see, it's really beautiful. Um, and we have areas like, it's like an African cargo, but now we only have like African data here, data that's from Africa, because we are aiming to solve Africa challenges using Africa data. And as you can see, the different challenges that you can use, and you can also select like, if you want to have like a good for beginner kind of challenge, um, which you can be you can use to just touch a bit on how you can get started with your data skills. Um, so this is just the different challenges that you can have. You can have natural language processing, classification challenges, and just choose which domain you want to get into, which is actually kind of nice if you want to learn and implement your skills and get paid for. And then here you have like a blog for anything you want to learn about how to submit um, a solution, how to, you know, go about a challenge from the winners who own those challenges. You know, you can learn something, you can talk with the community here and just learn more about um, a competition. And then there's a community here for those people who are leading on the leaderboard. And finally, for those who are looking for opportunities in data, just even if it's to check um, what they are, um, what, what the requirements are. You can see some of them are requesting for a master's. Just apply, even if you have your bachelor's, <laughs> just apply and your years of experience, just get to know what the interview is about. By the way, don't be scared about these interviews. Just be open to knowing their critique or just understanding the, let's say, just understanding what they need from a data scientist, getting their feedback. I think that's very valuable. Um, insights that they give you just request for like feedback after the interview so that you can grow and improve yes um and i think that's generally it and if you have like a, pro a profile your fully built profile with all your information it would be easy for the zindi team to also just get you recommendations for a job opportunity so yeah feel free to <laughs> log on to zindi and see um what might interest you in the platform. Again, it's for data scientists in Africa. So I, I would really advocate for it because I even got my first interview from the platform uh, for a job, which I didn't get, <laughs> but I learned a lot for my skills, from my skills. Mm, yes, and next on is just my starter kit um, from what I have been able to gain. So for me, I started self-learning at first. Um, okay, so I first started self-learning. It didn't go well, as it said. <laughs> I learned from Andrew, mm, and it was like a bit very unstructured for me to go through data science alone. And then I joined a boot camp where I got my skills, uh, hands-on skills of how to work with data science, got into the industry. And yeah, from then on, I also decided to, to venture into school. Yeah, so I decided to go and get a, a degree in data science and analytics. So I also understand like what, what so that I am able to understand like what data science entails not just the data science we get from libraries um the data science um calculus and linear algebra type of so it's been a good journey um but the first thing i would advocate is for you to find your niche um it some i i started off with loving natural language processing so i tried to just do social media analysis here and there um and then 
just fell into finance and then fell into this i didn't know what i wanted <laughs> but then in the long run i was able to see like i enjoy working with metrics i enjoy like seeing a product end to end um so a product being built end to end and facilitating that using data analysis and that's how i found my niche and i was able to to now i am trying to like build on it so that's how you start off, find your niche, that business domain, so that you know which data you'll be working with, how to collect that data, and then identify the way that you can learn your required skills. For me, as a product analyst, I follow um, analytics. What is it called? Analytics Analytics HQ um, by a lady called Omozara. She works at Google. She taught, she teaches a lot about product analysis. She works under the YouTube domain. So I learn a lot from her. I learn a lot from product management kind of courses. So that's how you learn the acquired skills for your domain. You identify mentors and advisors. So like the way you have joined the call to learn more about data science, um, you get to know the avenues that are there. Uh, for me, I just follow product, kind of product workshops and product sessions so that I learn more about what product is all about and how you can do data analysis on it, on a product. And that's how you pick up um, knowledge about domains and just learn from people who are already working in the industry. You leverage communities like Spacia Tech and other communities that I have mentioned. You stay up to date with industry trends. I usually use TechCrunch and Verge, sometimes Twitter, but I value mostly blogs um, that are tech, tech worthy. Um, so that I can be able to know like what's happening in the industry, like which new technology is trending, like maybe follow these influencers like Andrew again and just know, okay, there's something called prompting in chat GPT. Just take on a course for prompting in G uh, chat GPT for developers and understand what that is about because it's an industry trend and maybe it's going to be influential in your career path. So yeah, just staying up to date with the trends and then just putting your work out there, doing the project, um, just find a project you're interested in. You can use a competition as a, um, a foundation so that you know like what you're interested in, work on that project, put it up on GitHub, write a blog, share it with people so that you can get feedback and also just help other people and people get to see your work and then apply for maybe internships or opportunities just to get maybe feedback from interviews or you can even get an opportunity and start learning from their hands-on yeah so i think that's it please ignore the youtube <laughs> but let's connect on on linkedin um yeah you can take that if you want to reach out to me you can do it via my email address ignore the youtube i don't really have a channel <laughs> but um i have a blog so you can i think i'll just share my information with lawrence and you can share with the team so yes um open to any questions i I don't know if Lawrence will be facilitating that. So yeah, thank you. That's my presentation. Any questions? Um, okay, I think the meeting is being recorded, Bill. Um, and then this Brian Not profession, did you specialize in? In data science, generally, when I got started, I did everything to understand where I am centered, but right now I'm doing product analysis. Uh, but yeah, product analysis plus also I'm a community lead, so it helps me be able to work under the community as a product and analyze metrics from that. So that also helps me. Any question? Any other question that you might have? Yes, Sharon. Hi, uh, thank you for taking us through this session today. Uh, I think Juma had an issue with his on his side, so I'm not sure he will speak, but we, we appreciate the fact that you came today and shared 
So I'm not sure if anyone has a question for Delilah. You can raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Um, I can see on the chat this Edward. How can I start or what should I do to be where you are? <laughs> I think um I think for what I would advise is I won't say like where I am. <laughs> You'll dream further than where I am. But I think for you to understand, like first of all, if if on the on the top of like I think it's wise to still ask, is data science for me? I know we take it for granted and like we want to do data science because it's trending. So you first understand like where your niche is. I started as being a software developer and I was definitely not intrigued by doing it long run. So um, so that's why I dropped it and just joined data science. Um, so I understood like I am more of someone who who wants to know the whys and do a lot of investigation and being use a critical thinking path. So that's why I felt like data science was my pathway and um, self-learning didn't work for me. I acknowledged that. So I decided to invest in a bootcamp. And then there are these bootcamps that are like free, like ALX for data science, if I'm not wrong, or there's just a lot of opportunity. I think that uh, Lawrence has shared even there's a there's a scholarship opportunity. Yeah, there's there's a lot of scholarship, most especially I've seen for women um, in tech, but also I believe there's one that's for general. You can be able to get a scholarship to get a structure. I think structure is very important, but if you can self-learn, that's kudos. I know there are many channels on YouTube that you can learn. Uh, you can learn from, but just getting the structure of how to do an end-to-end -end pro uh, project in data science and actually implement it in a, in a, how do you call it, in an environment that's a bit fast-paced will give you those, that foundation of thinking on your tools and being able to problem solve. So in case you're able to get into uh, maybe a boot camp that you can be able to gain those skills within six months and just understand the workflow and then build on it, that's great. But if you prefer to self-learn, I would ask you to ask to look for a mentor who can guide you critically through that path and you understand like the domain you'd want to work in is it healthcare is it marketing is it logistics so that you are able to know who to target just go on linkedin and say i would love to work in linkedin let me look for someone who works under this role i want them to mentor me so that i can be able to um, draft my path from how they got there and then maybe do some plug and play for my own on my own way and just learn from them. So I think I think that's how you could get started from my uh, from what I can share from my two cents. And you'll generally you'll be somewhere as long as you're putting in the effort and you're being disciplined. In two years, you'll have uh, gained a lot and you'll be somewhere. So that's how I would advise Edward. Um, Derek, what advice would you give you someone to non-technical background? Um, I don't really think the the non-technical background uh, should should really pressure you. Um, Derek, which domain are you coming from? Maybe you can put it on the chat or just unmute so that I know which domain. Uh, I am a teacher. I teach English and literature. Oh, okay. Uh, and you want to get into data science? Okay. Yes, I'm just curious. I, I don't really know. Um, right now I'm doing uh, software development and I just joined this program out of curiosity. So mm. I, I don't know, maybe you can advise yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's I, I won't tell you that it's very possible, a hundred percent. Let me tell you, data science is even when you have like a background, I don't know, an un, anything background, just getting there and understanding like how data science works. Again, I would still advocate for a 
structured form of learning to understand an end-to-end -end way of working with data science tools so that you're able to know, okay, um, so now that I have these skills, I think I would better use it in my domain in English and literature. People actually do translation. And then you can match really nice when you're doing translation um, of a particular language to maybe even English, you understand the different grammar things and stuff. So there's just avenues you can log into or you can want to work in finance now that you have seen, okay, I have the technical skills. Data science will just teach you like how to program, use Python, you're already doing software development. So maybe that's an easy way you can learn to program, you can learn um, some bit of statistics math that you need to use, the tools you need to use, the libraries, how to analyze data, and then you settle on where you'd want to implement that after looking at different types of data. Do you want to work with text data or numerical data? Um, so that's when you fall into maybe you want to go into finance or you want to stay in your path as uh, in the English literature and use it maybe for job opportunities. I know like Africa No Filter at some point were looking for, um, I don't know if it's a journalism analyst or something like that, or just someone who has that literature side to be able to analyze data, I think from the organization. So there's definitely a way you can get started still advocating for a structured way of learning data science instead of um, just jumping on social, on, on, on YouTube and trying to look for how to get started resources. Sometimes you don't even finish those tutorials. So a fast-paced environment would be nice um, if you're able to get the scholarships. I think that would be my advice um, for you. I hope it's helpful or just get a mentor who can, who works maybe under that domain. Maybe you can try researching online um, based on a domain you're very interested in. I think it would be helpful. But thanks for that question. Any other question? Uh, Brian, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> uh, you wanted to be a full stack developer. I am, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, full stack development is not my domain, uh, but I feel like you can you can inquire from Spacia Tech. I definitely know they have, uh, maybe in, in the Discord, they have like a lot of developers who can help you and get you through that. But in any tech industry, I think the path is the same in learning and implementation. Yes, Lawrence? Yeah, good evening. Uh, what is the difference between uh, data analysis, uh, data analysis, and, uh, and data scientist? Then, are you possible to be a mentor? Oh, okay. Um, so, a data analyst. What I can say about a data analyst is someone. It's it's generally an analyst. <laughs> like you can be able to um, get data from a database and get insights from that data and maybe create a dashboard to give like insights to a stakeholder or something. Um, so that is generally our cover data analyst. They can use SQL, uh, get data from a database, do manipulation with basic maybe Python or Matplotlib or Seaborn libraries for visualization, use Tableau or Power BI tools to visualize data, put it on a dashboard and here they are communicating insights. Here is what I've been able to gather. Here's the conclusion. Maybe from this conclusion, the next steps can be this. Um, a data scientist now is literally, I think, I don't know if I call them end-to-end -end <laughs> data professions, but they have the data analyst nature in them, but then they go beyond that. They can, they can use statistics. Also an analyst needs to use statistics for maybe the basic univariate analysis, multivariate analysis, but then there's that um, data scientist who has now to have that pipeline of being able to analyze data and if needed can go to an extent of using machine learning as a source of solution to a particular problem if it's prediction and give insights of the same. So I think 
that's the whole pipeline of a data scientist but in different jobs you might find a data scientist doing a data analyst job or even in the aspect of a data engineer who is building pipelines for data to be able to be retrieved from different databases to lead to the data scientist for analysis i think you might find that you're also doing that as a data scientist in some companies. So it depends with which domain you, uh, which company you fall into and the stack they have. But in case you're put in there as a data scientist, that means at some point, maybe you can do the machine learning um, as an analyst. I don't know if you're still going to do the machine learning, but in some big companies, they, they give you that name, but you still do machine learning. But in theoretical terms, an analyst can can do analysis until that part and machine learning is not like the end goal um yeah i think that's the response to that lawrence um for mentorship i usually yeah i can i can share with you like a calendar i usually have some days during the month that i'm not so busy and i volunteer to mentor i usually post it on instagram but i can share with others so that they can mentor yeah, can mentor anyone who's interested in learning more or sharing a project just to be looked into for more for more feedback about the project they've worked on. So yeah, I'm open to mentorship. I'll just share my calendar so that in case anyone is interested, they can slot some time. Um, Any other question? Yeah, talking about. Uh, <coughs> you might think you're breaking. Uh, I think I think I I'll, I'll let Juma type type his 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 question first. Then we, we we see. I I saw someone here asking whether you can be his mentor. How man? Okay, his mentor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll share my calendar and we can have some mentorship sessions. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be nice so that I know also in case you're in a domain, I know someone might be in let's say finance and i think they'll be a better mentor to you i can always reach out to them so i can just be like a point of contact if i'm not able to you know again domain knowledge is very important because i can't help you in the finance side because i don't know like which features they use or variables but there's someone i can recommend to you who is extremely knowledgeable so they're going to give you more guidelines on what to look into when you're working with finance data so yeah in case i'm not able to help i'll always refer you to someone else okay thank you delilah uh maybe maybe, maybe to that point the extent of, of wanting to get a mentor we we will be launching our, our own, uh, this is our, our own in-house build solution to mentorship. And we we call it the mentalist. So if someone might be interested in one-on-one one -on -one mentorship uh, sessions, this is one of the platforms that I think most of us should embrace and try to get on board. Uh, I think the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the waitlist is still on. So if you'd wish to join the waitlist, you could just get on to mentalist.com and you'll get uh, you'll get to join the waitlist. But we'll be launching it on Thursday next week, that is on the 25th of this month. And we are very how, how we are very excited. We are very hopeful. And we have all those. We are just really really waiting for for the day to come so that we can actually have it better tested by more than we we are already better testing it on the back end. Well, in house, but I know this will be one of the this will be one of the points that we can get to have it out there for everyone to test how they can get mentors, how can they, they can get to be mentored on the platform. Oh, that's awesome, Jimmy. Cool. Looking forward to it. Hopefully, you can also get your yeah, mentorship from product analyst. Uh, I also know of a. ADP list in case there's also someone who's looking, yeah, 
is looking to get more mentorship i think you can never have limited mentors um yeah so thank you definitely looking forward to joining the platform and excited about it yeah i'm 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 i'm, I'm happy you mentioned adp list so um the, the difference the, the only different thing we are bringing to the men ouch to mentalist is the fact that you can get uh, a personalized like you you can get um, these are people that you can actually you can actually relate to these are people that can when as i know your experience if you tell them and they my data is down they will just and uh, they'll, they'll 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 relate to what you you are, you are actually telling them uh that is that is that is a different aspect for our our platform the mentalist and i i really appreciate that uh uh some points okay i'm just want to go away from the mentalist part uh we you you talked about community uh, uh, we are a budding community we want to grow uh, as a community with all of us here as you've mentioned you 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 you're technically you're, you're practically an all-rounded data scientist so you you are you, you you've tested each and every aspect of 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 that of data science as 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 i may, as i may put it and with 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 communities i think that is one one place we can we can we can offer you a platform uh, not not you daily I'm, I'm i'm this is to the audience <laughs> yeah so as with a with a community setup we uh, we we offer an all-rounded uh, all-rounded uh, platform where you can you can grow your skills you can learn you can actually interact with people get mentorship uh, that is that is the, that is the aspect of what we are bringing to the community and at Specia Tech we we want to do things different so we want to do things in a way that people haven't really tried we are not we are not really experimenting but we are doing things in in a way that people people have thought of doing it that way but people haven't conventionally done it so that is that is what we're trying to do at Specia Tech so if you would wish to join a community a budding community where you are your view your opinion is is counts um we will we will we, we'll, we'll gladly welcome you to our community i know we have we can't accommodate everyone to our community so we also in partnership with other communities so if you'd wish to join any other community that is not part of us we can just guide you through we can we could link you up uh that is that that is how communities grow i, I can't accommodate everyone i can accommodate just a number so that that is how communities actually grow so thank you, Delilah, for the session. I actually really, I, I, I think I joined a little bit late in, in, into the session, but I followed through. Uh, I think we, we, we could call you to another session, maybe a live one, uh, if you are if you are open to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I think next time maybe I can I can get a bit statistics. <laughs> Because I really oh. love it, statistics um, for data science, but we can always plan. And I've also plugged in, um, I'm a huge advocate for Zindi. I'm literally the community lead there. So I'm going to keep advocating for it. So feel free to sign up to Zindi um, for just to learn more and also get opportunities and get linked to opportunities. And also the Zindi data community, if you're data science centered, I think. Uh, you can work with people across Africa to help solve your solutions or just think around your problem. So it's very African, very, yeah, we actually, we are actually bigger than Africa, but most of our audience is Africa. But yeah, so feel free to join the WhatsApp. But thank you for hosting me, Lawrence, Jimmy, Sharon, and everyone who attended the call. I really uh, love sharing about data science, very passionate about it. And yeah. I'm really excited to join me to join Specia Tech and learn more from you guys. Yeah, I would also want to join Zindi. So uh, maybe maybe we'll talk on the side. Yes. Come on, come on. Yeah, we'll talk on the side. So yeah. thank you guys. So, uh, I think time is well spent. Uh, unless we have any more questions. Okay, we have a question just as I'm speaking. So. You could you you could you could look at it. Then we we call it as we call it a session. Um, for for the data engineering community, uh, 
Okay, to be honest, you usually have like data, everything data in the data community. You find yourself with the someone who you can always get who does data engineering as a specialty. So just join the community and inquire. You can join any data community like the Zindi one that I've put on WhatsApp. You can join data science analytics or women in data or just any data centered communities. I'll just talk to Lawrence and see if I can plug in those WhatsApp groups and then inquire if there's someone who's specializing in data engineering and they can help maybe for due to the specific group, but most of them are still in the data group because it's everything data. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Delilah. Uh, thank you once more for the audience. Uh, you know, without without the audience, we would have just been here speaking to ourselves. So you've you actually made this session a success. Uh, we also thank you. Maybe next time, you, 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 you if you wish to be a speaker, you could uh, reach out to us. We have a form that is going around on our socials. So if you could, if you'd wish to be a speaker in one of these sessions, kindly just get, get the form, fill it, and we'll, we'll, we'll actually schedule a session for you if you feel like you have something to share with the community. It doesn't really have to be technical. It can be just information you would wish, you'd wish to pass through. Uh, once more, we'll, we'll have such sessions every, every weekend, every Saturday. We have our spaces on Thursday. So if you'd wish to plug into our Twitter spaces, uh, uh, join us on, on on Thursdays, and we have an important uh, an important announcement for next week. <laughs> yeah, I wish you can get the we can get the form and register. Okay, we have an important announcement for next week on Tuesday. We we will probably be launching a new a new chapter of Specia Tech. This is the Tanzanian chapter. So we'd invite everyone in this audience to the space which will be on tuesday uh tuesday of next week so kindly if you if if you're not on twitter if you know if you don't follow specia tech kindly do 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 us the honors of of, of just following our socials uh thank you uh i think this is this, that is that's the time we have for tonight uh until next time see have a nice time Indele point trasamanga good night. Have a Mama Trasamanga Jesharon.